Okay, now it's being recorded. I can share the screen. But before the sharing, it, I have to Okay. First of all, I want to go very quickly over the literature part that we have gone it, we have gone through. And I'm just gonna let you know. Like I'm gonna go on the article itself. I'll open this article. And share it. So here in the literature part, the only thing that you always start with the introduction part, like every part, like it does, regardless of the article itself, like whether it's a, like data methodology, whether it's empirical results, whether it's a literature review, every part of the article should have introduction. Okay, you start with the purpose of your study. What is your purpose of the study? What was the aim of your study? The first thing. And the second, the importance, like the significance and how much it is crucial for you to study the certain Research, like you should underline, like this is part is very important. This part is very significant. Why you justify? Why did you go with these things? Like, and you just give this importance, but this importance should not come only from your own side. It should be compared with other previous research studies. Like how do they define this importance? Once you have identified the literature introduction part, then you go with the, let's say you're just, uh, trying to see what factors affects the financial sustainability of the of your companies. Then you start discussing the variables one by one, like how many variables you have selected based on the previous articles that you have studied. Let's say I have selected eight variables. So all these eight variables should be mentioned in your literature, starting with dependent variable, and you move to the right-hand side of the equation to independent variables. I start here like dependent variable, my, it's like financial sustainability. So first of all, I have to define it. What does my financial sustainability refer to? What does it mean? You give the definition, like this author defines it in this way. Or here, like financial sustainability refers to whether the company generates sufficient funds from a certain business that will help to sustain the productive process of, for the long-term period of time. However, depending on the funding, Design of the objective of the notion of the financial sustainability will change between the for-profit and non-profit organization. This was defined by Bowman. According to Yatao and II and the Sene, like financial sustainability, so you give different authors definition, how each author defined it. You just compare the, the dependent. In here, you're trying to underline that these authors, they use this variable as a proxy for financial sustainability, as a profitability, GDP as an economic growth. I don't know, financial market for something. So whatever dependent variable you're gonna use it, you have to support it by also with the previous publication. Another dependent variable is leverage for myself, like which is capital structure. I use it and again, just support with the previous studies. Then I move to independent variables. My independent variables are divided into two parts, firm specific and macroeconomic variables. If, if you're using like firm, firm based variables, like firm data analysis, then you're gonna divide it like firm specific and like macro data. And each variable should be discussed with the support of like here. You can discuss like one paragraph for each variable or you can make the big paragraph, but within that big paragraph, you're gonna explain all the variables like management efficiency here, liquidity here, and it continue with other variables like size, profitability, and so on, okay? And the tax, what else you have, and so on, like it. And you're gonna continue with the macroeconomic variables, okay, discuss them. And in the last paragraph, okay, before coming to the theoretical part, you may discuss, as a summary, provide the table of the previous 
articles that you have used it. Let's say five, six articles, you give the description of the table. Like in this article. Here. Like, this is like the description of your literature, re like revising all the studies that you did it, okay? In here, it was discussed like maybe it's more than five or six, like 19, but you're like, if you use like five, six, that will be more than enough. Just review the main part. Why you're doing it so? Because you want to show that you studied the previous literature and based on that previous literature, you're working on your paper. Okay, so this is the what we did it. And then you're gonna continue with the theoretical part. And you explain the theoretical part. What theory did you test? For example, in this article, it was stated that which theory did they test? And she mentioned at the beginning here. I think she, did she mention it? I don't know. Or she means hypothesis studies here. Okay, it's a results. Okay, then you just go with literature review in this way. But when it comes to the data and methodology, okay, and it should not be very huge and very big here. The first, like if you can see that uh, data that just explains the source of database you used it. Where did you collect the data? What type of data set you have it? If you remember, we had three different data sets. Panel data, time series, and the cross section. So, which data set did you use? If it was panel data, then you have to mention panel data, but never use an article like I used panel data. No, don't use it like, okay? Explain whatever you did it from the third party. Like the panel data has been gathered from the Orbis database, from the World Bank database, from the Bank Focus database, from the Bloomberg database. So, this is how it should be. And for what years and for what countries, okay? And of course, whenever you're given a certain countries, okay, let's say you used Kazakhstan. Why did you select the Kazakhstan? What made you to select the Kazakhstan? You should not put the reason, I selected Kazakhstan because I live in Kazakhstan and I'm a kind of patriotic of this Kazakhstan island, not land. So this should not be the justification, okay? Your justification should be clear. Like it's a developing country or it's an emerging country. And it was, it took the attention of all major investors. Okay. There should be some reason standing behind. Why did you select with this uh, uh, proposal? Like, why did you come up with this proposal? Why did, why did you go with this? Okay. Then you once explain how many companies did you use and so on. And explain like, I used, many variables, you don't have to explain all the variables in this paragraph, what you can do, you can create a table and say that the variables are described and explained in table one, which is here, okay? Like dependent variable, what is financial sustainability? What does it mean? This, this, okay? And independent variables are here. And as you can see, some notation, like abbreviations, like how you're gonna use it in your state, you should put the abbreviated, abbreviated form to, like what does cap str means? It means capital structure, okay? And next column, the last column, as you can see here, it's an impact, okay? Whether you should so show what type of impact you're expecting, positive or negative, okay? You should mention it too. This is your expectation. So in all cases, I showed here that I expect Positive and negative both, because we never know what what result what type of the result you may come. But it's in my case. In your case, if you're pretty sure about the result, and you may say that I expect this, it could be the case you expected one sign, and the result shows the different sign. This does not necessarily mean that you're wrong. This ne does not necessarily mean that you're doing something not correct. Okay, this shows that the result goes in opposite way that you were expecting. So you can explain it why you're expecting it. Okay. So in here, you provide the data set, variables that you have it, and each definition. 
Why we are giving? Because for the audience who are going to read it, like academicians or practitioners or management, they will have to refer to the variable abbreviations. Okay, they will see the results like this. Okay, and they don't know what each variable means. For example, if you're not familiar with the uh, abbreviated variables here, like CI, what does the CI mean? You never know because if you didn't use it before. So if you refer to the table, you can check here, CI, it's here. It's a cost to income, okay? It shows CI here. It's a management efficiency. It shows the total cost over income, okay? And you continue like this. Okay, now I go back. So this is, was my data part. Then you move to the methodology and model. In methodology part, you start again with the purpose, with your aim. What was your aim? My aim was to identify factors that affect the financial sustainability. My aim was to identify what factor drives the foreign direct investment. My aim was what drives the capital market capital uh, stock return. My aim was to identify what drives the CAPM model, okay? And so on. So you state your purpose. Then you continue. What type of methodology did you use? Before running the regression analysis, autocorrelation, heteroscedasticity, stationarity, multicolonarity tests were used. To test for so what is the multicolonarity? You can explain each with one sentence. Stationarity is this. You can get it from the other sources, but do not copy paste. Paraphrase it. Paraphrase. Do not copy paste. And by paraphrase, I don't mean that changing the like synonyms or so. Fully should be paraphrased and should be quoted from where did you get this source. Okay. Once it's done, then you're moving, you explain everything, okay? like unit root tests and so on, multiple narrative was used and so on. And then you, uh, if you use FGLS, you explain FGLS. Why do you use the FGLS? You explain it too. I, FGLS methodology was used to control or to solve the problem with autocorrelation and heteroscedasticity. And various inflationary factor was used to, to check multicolonarity. Okay, and so like all the methodology you did it and you performed it, you have to explain it. And then you come up with a model. Okay, you create a model. Okay, this is your model. You create a model. This is like dependent variable. This is firm specific variable. This is macroeconomic variables. And this is market structure variable in my case. And you explain your model, what each, each item means. Your model should not be like this, okay? Like the formula, I have it here. It can be very simply written. So this shows that you see, in in briefly, I wrote it in what way? Like summation of all firm specific variables, firm specific independent variables, all betas. But you can put it like beta zero, beta one, beta two, beta three, beta four, beta five, beta six, and so on. You can put it in that way. It shouldn't be this. This is my way of, Illustrating, yeah. No, there is no such a limitation like five or six. It will be depending what articles did you study. If in your article that you have studied, they use like four or five or six, you say that I am using five, like five variables, they were using this. And additionally, I'm adding this variable. This variable was not was not used in any of the articles that I have mentioned it. And this will be my contribution to the literature. Like you need to come up with something new that have not been done. Once you explain the variables, okay. And that's it. You explain the variable, you're gonna come up with Data methodology, that's it. You explain like data methodology, very short, should not be very expanded and so on. And then, of course, then we will be moving. So this is like what the data methodology I'm expecting from you. And based on that, uh, you will have to submit it on next Thursday. It's already there in the Moodle. I don't know whether did you have a chance to see it or not. 
So you have to upload it there. But I believe it should not take more than one day to write the data methodology. Literature part is more challenging than data methodology. So meanwhile, when you will be working with your methodology and data, please make sure that you can improve the literature part. And please see me for the literature part, especially Kester. I want to see you next week and Gulia. I want to see you too, because I end for you too with the literature. I didn't like your literatures, okay? If somebody has some like doped in your literature, come and see me again. And there was a person who just made the appointment. I could not meet it. Like there was like some time confusion. I forgot the name. Anyway, who wanted to see me just again, text me and I'll be in my office. And most probably I'm, I'm in my office like Tuesday and Thursday from six to seven. If this is the best time that I can just help you to assist you and guide you in your writing the literature. Th Tuesday and Thursday, like the days of the class that we, or the days that we have the class. Okay, this is done with the data methodology. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Okay. If not, uh, then I would like to just review the things that we did it so far. Last time and like steps before the regression. Okay. Normally, as we know that uh, before you start any regression analysis, you have to perform a certain test, which you already know it. After you performed it, after you conducted that test, then you have to run the reg regression analysis. If you assume that everything is fine, like there is no problem with the autocorrelation, heteroscedasticity, multicollinearity, and the data is stationary. Let me just share it. Okay. So in here, I have underlined, as you can see, the test that you need to perform. Stationarity, then you go with the multicollinearity, autocorrelation, heteroscedasticity, and endogeneity. Endogeneity is like one of the important issues that cannot be ignored. And as I told you, you are not obligated to test the endogeneity for yourself. But if you test it, it's going to be a big plus for you. But these four tests that we have already covered, it's must. And you're highly recommended to go with endogeneity. But when you're going to be writing your thesis, this is kind of must for you if you if you really going to be if you really want to be successful in your thesis, like in presenting and writing and making a research. Because endogeneity is the issue in research that is really not possible to ignore it. Okay. So let me just uh, start. Yes. And what is that? I'm ex I'm going to explain it. Okay. I'm going to explain again from the beginning what is endogeneity and like where it's going to be used and so on. We will like go again from the scratch, starting from the stationarity up very quickly, and we'll come to the back to endogeneity. So let's say uh, we have a model. Just a second. I will go file, import, Excel spreadsheet. Let's say I'm going to use time series data. So first of all, I have to declare that data set is is time series. I wrote statistics. I'm serious setup it will declare that they set. And it's a yearly. So I declared my data set to be time series. Okay. Now let us just assume that we are given the following model. I want to test 
FDI as my dependent variable. Like I want to see what factors affect my FDI. So for indirect investment, better zero plus better one. This is my econometrical model. I'm not going to explain what does the econometrical model mean because we have done it so far many times. So I'm going to just leave it as it is. So the first variable I want to test like uh, the GDP because we know that logically GDP has got the impact on dependent variable plus better two and I'll put it, let's say military expenditure, military expenditure. So this is going to be our model plus error term, okay? So we're going to have the error term here. So we have this econometrical model, which is given, okay? Everyone can see. FDI, it's like a dependent variable, and others we have selected just two independent variables. This is like multiple regression analysis, we know. First, we're going to check the stationarity using some codings that we have already provided in Word file, which is here, okay? So this, we're going to use a stationarity. Then we're going to test for multicollinearity. Then we're going to test autocorrelation. So what does the stationarity mean? Stationarity means that one variable, the properties of one variable, I mean, the means of the properties of one variable should be equal, uh, should not be variated, okay? Uh, it should have long run uh, forecasting properties, like the variation of the mean should, not, should be forecasted correctly. The variation of the stationarity should be predicted. So to have a really good model, to have a really good data, the, station, uh, the variable should be stationary. If the variable is not stationary, we cannot run a simple regression analysis that we used to have it so far. Like uh, the means of the properties, the variance of the properties, the seasonality of the properties should be controlled in the uh, data when it's stationary. If it's not controlled, if it's not like forecasted properly, then we may have some issues in that. So we need to test for the stationarity using different methodology like Levin, Lin Chu, Pesaran, and so on. Secondly, when we do the multicolonarity. So what was the multicolonarity? So multicolonarity, it's a challenging, okay? It's a problem with that we've got to solve it. When the independent variables, military expenditure and the GDP are highly correlated, which is not really good sign. That will show the biases. That will have a negative effect on FDI, that will have a negative effect on our dependent variable, which is not really desirable. So we need to make a test of multicolonarity. Third, so we did this test for stationarity. Let's say we found that our data is stationary. Second, we did this uh, uh, test for multicolonarity. We found the data are not highly correlated. The variables independent are not correlated. Then we do autocorrelation test. So what was the autocorrelation test? Mm -hmm. We test the uh, for independence of future parameters from their past. No. So I mean, uh, they uh, refer the future or present parameters reflect uh, the same number but with the opposite sign of their past. So if you put it in a simple words, it's basically you're trying to measure whether your error terms are correlated. Like the things that you cannot observe it. Like unobserved variables, they are correlated, error terms. This is not really desirable. What about the heterogeneity, like heteroscedasticity? And they're not predictable. Yes, variance and standard deviation are very large and not predictable of error terms, mm -hmm. not the independent variables, okay? Mm -hmm. And when it comes to, this is like we did it for stationarity, multicolonarity, uh, heteroscedasticity, and autocorrelation. Again, multicolonarity when independent variables are highly correlated. Autocorrelation when Errors are correlated. 
error terms are correlated, which is not really desirable too, because if they are correlated, they will have an effect on FDI too. And heteroscedasticity, when this, uh, the distribution of the error terms are heterogeneic, okay, like heteroscedastic, they are not homoscedastic, which is not really desirable too. So which is, which is, which will have a really not desirable impact on the FDI too. And when it comes to endogeneity, endogeneity shows that some unobserved variables, they have the impacts on your independent variables. So they are relation, there is a relationship between variables that you cannot observe and the variables that you have already included. Because we created model here, but we did not consider all variables. It is not possible to consider all variables here. Like there is no way to do it. If you remember in the class last time, I gave the example like, imagine you have a wages, okay, as dependent variable, like beta zero plus beta one. And this is like education plus beta two. It's like experience plus error term. So this model will show that education and experience has have, will have a positive impact on your wages. However, there is a, some variable, they ha, it has effect on independent variables and it has an effect on wages too. Let's say the capability of the person, okay? The person who can easily digest the information, who can really be successful in everything. Like he's very fast in acquiring the knowledge. He's very fast in learning the things. Like he's like capable to do everything. Like he's successful. Like in uh, ability of inher inheritance ability, okay? He has like this ability to learn quickly. And you cannot really observe these uh, abilities easily, though, and you cannot include it in the model too. However, it has an effect on experience and education and wages too. Okay, so this is called endogeneity. Like error variable, if you just put it in a simple word, errors that we have it, they have a negative or positive impact on your independent variables as well as dependent variables. This is one part. Second part saying that previous wage or previous dependent variable has got the impact on dependent variable too. Like if we get the example of FDI, like what is the FDI? Foreign direct investment, yeah, investment. Like previous years, foreign direct investment has got the impact on current foreign direct investment. This is endogeneity, but we did not include it in our model. And for example, can we say that domestic credit can have an impact on the FDI? Like the money that the banks offer as a credit, they, they may have an effect on FDI. Do, they have, do, do you think there is an impact on that? Can domestic credit affect FDI? Just think the logical, rationally. Yes. How? So investors, they borrow the money from banks, yeah? More domestic credit are given to the investor, the more they will use it in their businesses to expand it, to open the new branches and to open the new products. So FDI definitely is affected by domestic credit, okay? This is how the foreign investors, they come and get the money and finance the project. Sometimes foreign investors, they come with their own money, maybe like 50 to 50 and so on. It may change. So in here, we did not include the domestic credit. And now we can understand that domestic credit is being an endogenous variable, okay? This variable has an effect on, on dependent variable. So we can see this is like endogenous. So 
Endogeneity is the variable that has the effect on the independent variables on as well as on a dependent variable, both. But we cannot observe it, which is called unobserved heterogeneity, which is really crucial, which is cannot be ignored. So that's why we have uh, kind of Darwin Wood test that help us to kind of see whether there is an endogenous variable or not. The opposite of the endogenous variable are exogenous variables, like variables that are fully included in the model. Like there is no any other variable that can have an effect on this. Okay. So if you put it in a simple words, endogenous variables are the error terms that are highly correlated with your independent variables. And we know that the error terms, we cannot forecast, we cannot control it. But if you do something, you can control these error terms, like using the two uh, like instrumental variables to solve the, and so on. So we, uh, we know how to solve the autocorrelation. We know how to solve the heteroscedasticity and we know how to solve the multicollinearity. And now there is an endogeneity problem and we know how to, and we learn, we will learn how to handle it and how to control the endogeneity. So this is our model. We're gonna use, we, we're gonna be using it. Let's say we're gonna just run it first, regress. Okay, FDI, GDP and military expenditure. So this is the result that I get it. So I can see that GDP has a positive impact on FDI and military expenditure does not have any impact. We can see it's not statistically significant. Okay. And using the here, we regressed it and we can use, first of all, this equation, but let's go with the stationarity, okay? If you want to test for stationarity, like time series, okay, it's unit root test actually. So I'm going to use this one and I will select the variables, let's say FDI, include the time trend. If I use okay, okay, uh, I'm using the panel. Yeah, we declare the time series, we declared it as a time series, it's like here. This is set years, yearly. We declared as a time series. Okay. It's here where you can test it, okay? For unit root test, augmented decay Fuller test, a GLS test, Philips Ferron, and so on. You can test it here, okay? We select the variables, let's say FDI. Input the time trend. You can add some lax variables. This is one test. You can do other tests. For example, this test shows that the p value is highly significant. Okay. Means that our data, our variable is stationary. So we can proceed with this. But we've got to check for all variables that we're going to use it, like GDP and so on. But we start with the, let's say with, with the stationarity, we checked everything. DK Fuller, I'm gonna use this one, let's say uh, GDP. But our GDP logarithm of GDP is not stationary, but we need to check maybe it's integrated order of one stationary. And I'm gonna check for military expenditure. Military expenditure is not stationary too. 
but I can check other tests, other methodologies, but I'll test it. But for this case, we will assume that our data is stationary. So in order to proceed with other uh, tests, like multicolonarity and so on. So we do the regression again. Then I do the start with to test the multicolonarity. And here I can see that the variance inflationary factor is like 2.22, which is showing that less than five, there is no multicolonarity. Then I proceed with autocorrelation. Next is serial. Regression. I know what not. Okay, this is for, I need to, this is like time series. I have to check it for time series regression analysis. Anyway, we'll check it, okay? Then we're gonna proceed with uh, heterogeneity, heteroscedasticity, and we're gonna use the panel data and, and we have to run the panel data analysis here. So we're gonna check this one, we, we will use it. And then when, when we proceed with the endogeneity, we use this coding, okay? We start with IV regress to SLS. And I type like FDI, GDP, network expenditure. And in here, I assume that domestic credit gonna be my endogenous variable. And of course, as we know that endogenous variable can be solved with instrumental variable, like uh, what can affect like uh, my domestic credit. I might think like what can contribute. I might think uh, the variable that I have it here like export. If you export more, more money will come to the country and it will contribute to the banking system and the domestic credit will uh, increase in this way. And this is one instrument variable can affect my domestic credit. And we know that the instrumental variables, they do fix endogeneity. If they are highly correlated export and domestic credit, that, that means that they will fix it. And we, in here, in this uh, IV regress to SLS method, we need to add like one more instrumental variable, which is, Anything. Uh, instrumental variables can be from independent variables too. Like I can use the GDP too. LN GDP could be as an instrumental variable too here. Then I just run it. And then what I do the next, I, uh, I can test for endogeneity, like a stat. And do. This shows that uh, Darwin and Wu Husman test shows that there is no endogenous variables. Like the variables that we selected are they are not endogenous variables, which is good. Okay. Why? How did I understand? I, I understood from the p values. For the variables that we selected to be endogenous variable the p-value should be less than one or five or 10% of significance level. Then this will be endogenous variable. Then it shows that the problem will exist. Then we have to use uh, different methodologies like using the start endogeneity. And once you have identified, let's say we found that this is the endogeneity variable, but we can see other endogeneity. Let's try another one not a domestic credit, but let's make the export to be endogenous variable and domestic credit to be as instrumental variable. Here we can see that 
export are the endogenous variable. Okay, means that export has got the impact on military expenditure, on GDP, and on FDI too. But it's not included in the model. So we should somehow control it. We need to find a, a good instrumental variable, bless you, that can help to control this variable. Because it is really not a good thing that when your export has got the impact on the military expenditure, on GDP and FDI. If you want to explain the logical that stands behind the this effect, because the export, when you export the goods and services, you receive the money on that. This money are spent on military expenditure and it contributes to the GDP. That's why it has an impact. As well, it has an impact on FDI too. Maybe some foreign com company comes and establish a business in local country, in domestically, and whatever the goods and services are produced, they're exporting abroad. So it's a logical relationship. It shows that it has an impact on independent variables as well as on dependent variable, which is not really desirable. So we found the export to be as endogenous variable. And as the Darwin and Wu Guzman test shows that the p-value are less than 1%, highly significant. Mm -hmm. Endogenous variable, yeah. Means that the export has got the impact on both military expenditure, GDP, and FDI, which, which is bad. But on the other side, it's bad. On the other, on the one side, is good, but we, we were able to find it out. So we can control it. So whenever we're going to be getting the results, we can just control that specific results. Now we know it. Second thing, we need to find out the really good instrumental variables. The instrumental variables that we put it here, this, okay, domestic credit and GDP are the instrumental variables, which means they will solve it, this export, okay? They will just fix it. They will just control it. Did we select the good one or not? We, we can see it from another test, which is test of over identification. Okay. Which is here, a start over ID. No, I wouldn't find restriction. That means that we have to add one more variable here. Maybe I'll put it. Okay. No or find restrictions. So that means, that, okay, I got it. I got the issue because I need to add one more here, variable. Maybe lag of FDI. Equation not identified. Okay. LFDI in both exogenous and variable lists. Okay, this is what I wanted.
equation, I define must have at least as many instruments not in the regression as their instruments variables. Sorry? I mean, maybe add one because it should be more than those MTI, GDP, and then there should be more than those three. Anything to add for one? Here. Not, not there, but in the brackets. Here. Yeah, yeah, there. Yeah. One more variable. Yeah. One more instrumental variable. I think it's like the, here's one. Because last time it was like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, but. FDI. Okay. As instrumental variable. Or let me use the L export. Start and doc. Start. Yeah. Now it works. So we had we should have at least at last time we had at least like three variables, one even four. After two SLS. No, we have like no no, it's not after this. Uh it's like instrumental variables are actually here. One, two, we have like here two variables only. That means that at least we should have here four variables in order to check for over identification. Basically, honestly speaking, we've got the data set here is not really good one. We can go with the panel data set too. Well, I want to try with the panel data. It was a time series. Let me just start, try that with the panel data then and see how it works. With the panel data, so I will declare the, declare the data set, XT set. ID and the year, then I'm just going to regress. Let's say I'm going to see what affects their profitability or asset quality management liquidity, like three variables. Start with, okay, multiple narrative goods. Okay, there's autocorrelation it shows. And then I, I can try IV regress. IV regress to SLS. And I can create one. Let's say variable, which will be my endogenous variable that can have an impact on both sides, on dependent and independent variables. I will select maybe unemployment and instrumental variables, gonna be the inflation, liquidity, I can use Roya. Like I'm using the variables that may have an impact on unemployment that will highly be correlated with unemployment like government effectiveness, you can use it for government stability, like one, two, three, four. And I can use like capital adequacy. And I can check a start and the genetic. So we can see the unemployment that we have selected is highly significant, which shows it's high, is like the probability for unemployment to be Endogenous variable is very high because unemployment affects both sides. Like the return on assets and it affects all. Okay, once we identified the unemployment to be as endogenous variable and these are the instrumental variables. Now we need to check the validity of these instrumental variables used. If we go with uh, a start over ID, 
that will give us idea of whether the variables that we have selected, whether they're over identified or they are validated or not. And we can see the Sargon and Basman uh, test shows that they're highly significant. So the variables that we have selected here, okay, highly significant. So it means they're validated. So we selected a really good instrumental variables that solve the problem of endogeneity. So you can run the regression analysis using the 2SLS and start interpreting your results. But of course, again, you have to do stationarity. You have to do autocorrelation tests. You have to continue with the heteroscedasticity and multicolonarity tests. And of course, respectively with the endogeneity test. And after that, when you finish it, you can co just continue and make it what is so mm -hmm. after is the last part after everything but it doesn't matter because, because the order it doesn't matter because anyway you, you will not run any regression analysis until your data is ready to be conducted yeah, it's a kind of final step before the running the regression. If there is endogeneity, like one of the way to do it is uh, using the instrumental variable regression to SLS. However, uh, there are other things that, in reality, there are many things that you cannot ignore, and they are like more advanced level to do it, like which is using two step system German, which is not. Uh, which is not the scope of this course, like it's out of the schedule of this course. So we are only limited to this two SLS. Okay. Any question? Yes, please. Uh, so we have instruments to this multiple polarity as a correlation and a particular cause. Yes. But what about stationarity? Because it's just for stationarity. Yeah. If my data is all bad, I cannot go. If it's not stationary, you cannot run. Uh, regression analysis, you cannot run fixed effect, random effect, you cannot run to SLS and so on. The only thing you can go with to check the relationship with each variable individual, because stationarity is all about the future forecasting relationship. It can be, you know, it's you go further, like stationarity of integrated order one, stationarity integrated of order zero. Now, we can check for stationarity, let's say for our data, if I'm going to check it, let's say set up declare data set, oh, not the declare stationarity, what I'm doing, like link, linguatinio and unit root test. I'm going to use, let's say, living link Chu here, the first one. And I'm going to check the, not FDI, but government stability, okay? One variable, including the time trend and submit. I can see that it's stationary. It's okay. In case if it's not stationary, then you have to check like uh, at what integrated level they are stationary. Like that means that you cannot use the regression analysis. You will use co-integration approach, like boundary test, Granger causality test, and so on, which I will show you the next week. Yeah, we'll come to that point. Arch and Garch are mainly used for volatility measurement. Okay. But up to this point, we assume that our all data are stationary. It could be the case they are not stationary. I think that's the question. Uh, uh, if uh, we are doing or visit all these uh, steps. Uh, yes. 